city. I call heaven and earth to be a record today. That right. rock nation, right. you will crumble. It's corporately sponsored pedophile. Everybody knew. Once it came out on R. Kelly, Jay-Z fled the scene. The point was he knew all the time. For 20 years, Jay-Z refused to speak out against R. Kelly, but his former partner, Dame Dash, won't stay silent. Aaliyah is key to everything. Aaliyah and I were very serious. When she was underage, yeah, I forgot about Jay, huh? We only know about Damon Dash messing with Aaliyah and, uh, and R. Kelly. But that ain't the only one that Jay had when she was underage. Yeah, I remember Fox Brown and Jay. So it looks like the walls are finally closing in on Jay-Z, and he's just one step closer from also getting destroyed like Diddy and 50 Cent just sent out a major warning to Jay to watch his back because he's coming for him with everything he's got. 50 is reportedly already gathering evidence to make sure Jay will be the next to go down after Diddy. There has been concrete evidence of Jay unaliving people and messing with a lot of women who were still under age of 18 in exchange for opportunities opportunities in Hollywood. A lot of people initially turned a blind eye to these allegations, but with everything going on with Diddy right now, people are revisiting all those allegations, and baby, the receipts are receipting. Word on the street is, 50 Cent has no plans of letting this go till he successfully destroys Jay and shows the world that Jay is equally as despicable as Diddy. Uh, Jay -Z, I know you know. Please don't sit them at my head. Now, for those of y'all who don't know, 50 and Jay-Z have been mortal enemies since 1999 because they were both fighting over who was the king of New York. They threw jabs at each other in their music, and at one point, Jay even went as far as threatening to end 50's career. They eventually settled this feud, and that's when 50 Cent decided to feature Jay and Diddy on the remix of his song, I Get Money. Now, it's unclear what exactly happened during the making of this song, but 50 and Jay's feud quickly transitioned from it being just a rap beef to it being very personal. People speculate that 50 Cent probably got a glimpse into the things that Jay and Diddy had been getting down to and decided he needed to separate himself. Now, for those of y'all who don't know, Jay and Diddy were already close friends for years before 50 Cent even came into the picture. In fact, there was a photo of Jay on Diddy's website and they've been spotted together at a lot of industry events over the years. And with all the allegations that have been coming out, People are now suspecting Jay as Diddy's accomplice because of how closely they used to work together and how similarly they treat the women in their lives. See, but what most of y'all don't know is that Jay came under a lot of heat a couple years ago when he was exposed for forcing Foxy Brown, who was just 15 years old at the time, into a relationship with him in exchange for her career. Allegedly a romantical thing. It's, it's all right, I'll say alleged, but we know we know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. <laughs> Allegedly. Sources claim Jay paid Foxy a ton of money to keep this a secret, and this was later confirmed by Jay's longtime friend and ex-business partner, Dame Dash, who got super defensive when he was asked about Jay and Foxy's affair. At what age was Foxy Brown signed? I wasn't paying attention to Foxy Brown. Yeah, but that's. I didn't sign Foxy Brown. I know you didn't. I'm just in asking the question. Because I'm on the block. I'm responsible for everybody. <laughs> you the boss. That. I wasn't. Oh, now I'm the boss. I, when, I've always given you the credit as a boss. What I'm saying is, bro, I didn't sign Foxy Brown. I'm just asking. What do I got to do with Foxy Brown? I thought Foxy was like 16. That's all I'm saying. What that, did I sign her? <sighs> It sounds like you all I'm saying is like in this industry when we live it in seems these glass like you houses. Got, it seems like you got a question for Jay. Ask him. <laughs> Don't ask me his questions, bro. I'm not taking. It. I'm not. Okay. Y'all can keep asking me questions. We're moving on. Y'all keep asking me questions. <laughs> Y'all want to ask him because he ain't here. <laughs> ask him. I ain't got shit to do with that, and I don't even know nothing about that, and now I don't even want to remember nothing about that. People couldn't help but to point out just how similar this is to what Diddy did to Cassie. He started dating her when she was just 19 years old and promised her a career in Hollywood, only for him to completely mess up and blackball her career. Oh, but Dame wasn't done yet. He went on to spill some more tea about Jay's very weird obsession with younger girls. He said he made the decision to stop messing with Jay-Z when he realized he had no plans of distancing himself from 
R. Kelly, even after R. Kelly was exposed for being a predator. Now at that time, R. Kelly was just exposed for lying about Aaliyah's age and marrying her when she was just 15 years old. Now you would think that Jay would stop associating with him after he found this out, but of course he didn't. He actually showed his support for R. Kelly by releasing a joint album with him called The Best of Both Worlds. Dame also said Jay wanted to get into a relationship with Leah and even began sending her flowers and inviting her to his infamous parties, but she kept saying no to his advances. I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well. And I didn't know. He was sending flowers and he was courting her. Because the rumor originally was that you were connected to Jay. Exactly. Jay and I were hanging out a lot. He's my homie. We have a lot of fun together, but we never dated like that. After Aaliyah's sudden passing in the plane crash, it was rumored that her death was sacrificial, orchestrated by the higher-ups, including Jay, R. Kelly, and of course, Diddy. See, Aaliyah never wanted to get on that plane. It's reported she was given a sedative without her consent, and once she went unconscious, they threw her on the plane. Next thing we knew, she was dead. After Jay's bizarre relationship with Foxy and his failed attempt at a relationship with Aaliyah, that's when he set his eyes on Beyonce, who just like like Foxy and Aaliyah were also very young and naive. In fact, Jay revealed this in his 2007 interview with Charlie Rose, that he and Beyonce met when she was 16, but he waited till she was 18 before making his move. Like how? I feel like she never got to experience life with the different types of people. And the fact that he was so old, low key, I feel like the only way she expresses herself is through her music. As if that wasn't bad enough, Beyonce's ex-bodyguard Uncle Ron also said that Jay is responsible for Beyonce's raging substance addiction. He got her hooked on all sorts of different substances so he can control her. Yeah, Beyonce's on She's been on them for a long time and you keep her that way. Once again, this is very similar to what Diddy did to Cassie. She accused Diddy of filling her up with substances and alcohol, including ketamine and ecstasy, causing her to fall into dangerous addictions that controlled her life. Then there's Jay's alleged ex-mistress, Kathy White, who he allegedly unalived. The reports about Jay unaliving Kathy came around when people started digging around and came across an article that had been posted by Hollywood Street King, claiming that Jay used Used to have an affair with Kathy. The article said, there's a juicy little rumor bubbling under right now claiming Jay-Z is boning one of Claudia Jordan's homegirls, a chick named Kathy Corinna White. According to Diary of a Hollywood Street King, Jay's been smashing for a while. Enlarge this picture and you can just make out Kathy and Claudia standing just to the left of Jay, too close for someone not in his inner circle. Sips tea. And if you zoom into the photo, you actually can see Kathy turning up with Jay, Diddy, and Claudia Jordan. Now this is where things get even more interesting, because just a year after Kathy and Jay's affair, she mysteriously died and her cause of death was reported to be a brain aneurysm. But people didn't buy that and they suspected there was foul play. Once again, Hollywood Street King came through with all the receipts and even went as far as to speaking to one of the NYPD officers who were involved in investigating this whole mess. There's an article that I came by and it detailed everything that actually happened. The article read, Yesterday, I got the news that Kathy Michelle White had suddenly passed away. So I quickly began my investigation and guess what? Kathy did not die from a brain aneurysm as reported widely around the internet today. According to an NYPD detective who told me, Kathy's cause of death is uncertain. And later today, we will have the autopsy and toxicology reports. Right now, the death is considered suspicious. A 911 call came in from an apartment on 130 West 19th Street in Manhattan. The ambulance came and took Kathy because she was sick. They took her to the Beth Israel Hospital and that's where she expired. It was too early to be speculating that an aneurysm killed her. They will be doing an autopsy later to check out her cause of death, but someone might have given Kathy a bad drug. So they'll do a toxicology and we'll have to wait two weeks for that report. Two weeks prior to her death, Kathy was contacted by a major tabloid that was investigating the Jay-Z connection. She gave them little information to go on, but according to one of our sources, following her connection with the tabloid, she called Jay and told him that she was gonna go public with their affair for a price. This 
all happened in the last two weeks. Then, a little more than 48 hours after that announcement that Beyonce was pregnant with Jay's baby, this young lady suddenly dies under suspicious circumstances. White's life was taken unfairly. She actually died screaming. And the Carters are responsible. But one of them is just a little more responsible than the other. Question is, did Sean Carter delete his mistress, his pregnant, his pregnant mistress, because his wife was jealous? Or could it be possible that maybe his wife's temper is just a little worse than most people think? And maybe he just had to clean it up to protect the brand, see? I mean, I'm just speculating. So as y'all can see, Jay is equally as dirty and as despicable as Diddy. The only reason he ain't been caught yet is because he's far smarter and doesn't let his raging sexual desires control him. Carter is worse. Uh oh. Oh man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Mm -hmm. This he been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 fucking years. He's worse. I think the KPD trial has the potential to force Sean Combs to finally be honest about some things that he hasn't been honest about, which could create great leverage for knocking that big lip camel face f back into the oblivion in the depths of hell where he f came from. Oh, but of course, 50 does not plan on watching all this happen without saying a word. In fact, when Cassie recently filed her lawsuit against Diddy and exposed him for SAing her and making her sleep with male S. 50 wasted no time in sending out his support for her. He put up a post dragging Diddy for filth after he settled Cassie's lawsuit within 24 hours. He said he paid that money real quick. Should have done that before the sharks saw the b on the water. And here they come in five, four, three, two, one. Every woman he put his hand on. 50 followed it up by announcing he was gonna do a documentary on Diddy and bring out the truth about everything that Diddy's been doing, as well as the people who have protected and helped him to carry out these crazy acts. He reposted an article about him developing a documentary about Diddy and captioned it, I thought Diddy was a billionaire music mogul. If he's smart, he will file bankruptcy now. Anyone with real money knows why I'm saying this. I'm the best producer for the job, guys. Here come the receipts. But it looks like this documentary he working on isn't only gonna be about Diddy, but he will also be going in on Jay-Z and exposing him as well. Shortly after news broke of Diddy's home being raided by the feds, 50 posted a poster for the documentary to remind people that he was still working on it. He followed it up with a meme of Jay's photo on a milk jar with a missing label above his head and wrote the caption, anybody seen Jay, lol. Puff said the man ain't answering his phone. Ciao, 50 Cent is petty. It's clear as day that Jay was also involved in everything that Diddy's been doing. The evidence is all out there and he's not gonna be able to escape what's coming to him. Now, as usual, people had a whole lot to say about this. Like this person who said, Diddy won't go down alone. Dude got files on everyone in the industry. There would be a lot of name calling with slow singing and flower bringing if his burglar alarm starts ringing. Another person said, 50 Cent is so real. Y'all want to drag Nikki so bad for her husband's past mistakes and whole time? Jay-Z and Diddy are both disgusting men who have all been at the same parties, joint tours, in studios together. All the power Jay got, just like Diddy. They cut from the same cloth. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about 50 Cent exposing Jay-Z? And do y'all think that Jay is really next in line after Diddy? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.